Sunday afternoon in the nation's capital, the Stars and Stripes flying proudly inside Bender Arena. It's Patriot League pride on the line, league home opener for the American Eagles, matched up this afternoon against Boston University. Hi there, Jason Knapp here. Glad to have you with us alongside the former head coach at Hofstra, Mo Cassera. Mo, we've got two teams picked to finish in the top five of the Patriot League in the preseason poll matched up today, and they go about it with two distinct different styles. BU on the road here today, but a very big physical team like to play around the basket an American has great guard play led by Saeed Nelson you talk about the post presence for the Terriers inside really triggered by Max Mahoney the senior just an old school bruiser down low physical presence tough hard nosed and he's developed his offensive game very good around the basket efficient strong rebounding He's the guy that really makes them go. Top five score in the Patriot League, sixth in rebounds, and Saeed Nelson in the league, he's top five in a lot of things. And maybe maybe number one, preseason player of the year in the Patriot League can do a little bit of everything, offensively, defensively, a scoring machine. Yeah, he's top five in the nation in steals per game. And against BU, he's terrorized them. Four straight wins for American over Boston University. Nelson's averaged about 23 points per game in those victories. So that's the question for the day. Can AU extend the streak against BU or will the Terriers extinguish it? Find out with us. The lineups and tip on the way. Sunday here in D.C. AU and BU going toe-to-toe -to -toe here in Patriot League play. Glad to have you with us as we get ready for two teams that have been on some streaks so far this year. And the Eagles dropping three in a row. BU lost five consecutive games at one point, but since they've ripped off four straight wins, AU, as we talked about, Mo, was won the last four head-to-head -head against the Terriers in this series. So Mike Brennan, it is season number seven in charge here at American, took the Eagles to the semifinals of the Patriot League Tournament in each of his first three seasons in charge, including the Patriot League Tournament title in year number one, as this team looking better. Third of the preseason poll behind Colgate and Bucknell in the preseason rankings. And Joe Jones, season number nine for him, with the Terriers, second all-time in wins in program history. And his group, fifth in the Patriot League preseason touting, coming in with a 7-7 seven and seven record. And again, feeling good, four straight wins, including rallying from 14 down to the first half Mo to win their league opener against Lafayette. Big bucket from Jonas Harper in the final 20 seconds put them ahead this day. BU playing well and trying to find a way to keep it going now on the road, and that's a challenge in league play. How about the starting lineups for this one, the first fives on the floor? You saw the grouping there for BU, and in it is Javante McCoy jumps back into the starting lineup after coming off the bench the last two games. And you look at that first unit for American, Jacob Bunyasit, third in the Patriot League in three-point shooting, and McCoy for... BU, Mo, his three-point shooting, first two years, nearly 40% combined this year, under 20% BU looking for better perimeter shooting overall. And how do they do that? They throw it into the big fella. Talking to Joe Jones with you before the game, it's got to go inside, Mahoney's got to touch it, and then they got to look to score, which they're going to do. They're going to play off of him, and when that ball kicks out, you got to be shot ready, and their shooting percentage has got to be better for them to take that next step in the Patriot League. BU again winning its league opener, American falling in its league opener. Somebody had to go visit defending league champion Colgate. The Eagles drew that short straw, and they were held to a season low in scoring 51 points. American has been offensively challenged at times the last couple of years, but this year has been much better, averaging 71 points per game. BU in the red on offense, attacking right away. Alex Villarino, you saw the post touch there for Mahoney. Again, at 6'8", 235, a load to handle on the inside. Under 10 on the shot clock. Villarino wheels around, pulls up from the foul line. They'll get Saeed Nelson on the reach-in foul. A 
Mike Brennan's team's traditionally very good defensively. This is probably one of his best overall offensive teams, so it's going to be that combination for him now. They're better offensively, but then it's going to be getting stops on the defensive end. At the free throw line, Willerino, first off back iron, sophomore from McKinney, Texas, went to prep school in the New England area at South Kent, misses them both, but Mahoney gets the offensive rebound. He's second in the league in offensive caroms and extends this trip here for BU. McCoy, pull up, and maybe that'll get him going from the outside for the talented junior from Milwaukee out of Phillips Exeter Academy in New Hampshire. Really nice offense there, and credit Max Mahoney created an extra offensive possession on the road. First look on offense for American, a Princeton style attack. Mike Brennan learned and playing for Pete Carrill with the Tigers, but again, so many NBA teams use principles of it now at the highest levels of the game. So effective when you get that proper spacing on the floor. And that extended three-point line, Mo, going to give you even more room to operate. So many versions of the famous Princeton offense now. Underneath, beautiful backdoor cut for McCoy. Joe Jones said, when we've played well and won, he's played well. That's an encouraging sign for the Terriers that the first four has come from McCoy. Right, right, right back. Mark Gasparini. Forced to pick up the dribble. And now McCoy generating a turnover. Villarino kicking it to the corner. And out of bounds, it'll belong to AU. To win on the road, got to take care of the basketball. Don't turn it over in transition. BU really the more aggressive team here, and that frustrates Coach Jones. You got a fast break there, turn the ball over without getting a shot. And Saeed Nelson's got to be the guy to really make American go here. Again, he has destroyed. The Terriers in their last four meetings. Stacey Becton Jr. on the baseline, getting it back to Nelson. He'll pull up for three, side rim. Mahoney battling with Gasparini for the rebound. It'll go against the American big man. Yeah, you mentioned Saeed Nelson to Joe Jones before the game. We chatted with him. He just went, uh. <laughs> because he's just really taken it to them. Average about 23 points per game in those wins. You look at his numbers on the year. And continuing to enhance his resume. Top five scorer all time at AU. 12th all time in Patriot League history. Mahoney called for the travel before the contact. And that's back to back turnovers for BU. And back to Nelson for a second. Um, you know, preseason player of the year. You just see him so much confidence, shares the ball so well. Gotten so much better over his career here at American. And defensively as well, one of the assist, excuse me, the steal leaders in the nation. Gasparini had a good look, couldn't get it to go. Big man for American, averaging over eight per game. It's 12 for the first half against Colgate, but then got neutralized just a bucket after that in the second half. And the Eagles loss on the road. Villarino, Villarino driving there, contact, and he'll get to the free throw line. Jameer Harris, first-year player for the Eagles, the transfer from Minnesota, picking up the person. When the ball comes out of the post or from the baseline there, it's a great time to either be shot ready for a quick three or drive the ball to the basket. And another great effort there, getting to the foul line. Another big thing to have road success, get to the foul line. Third team foul in America, none so far against BU. The issue for the Terriers isn't getting to the free throw line, it's making them when they get there. Just 64% success rate from the stripe. That's eighth among the 10 Patriot League teams so far this season. Gasparini, another deep look, and he'll convert. Tell you what, there's going to be some bruises on Gasparini and Mahoney tonight. Those two, maybe the two biggest physical presence in the Patriot League, and they are going at it here early. He had a nice warm hug for Joe Jones when he came out for a pregame warm-ups. Guy from Brookline, Massachusetts. Ian Gasparini knows the Boston contingent well. McCoy gives it up. Walter White, tough take, and he will get to the stripe. 
What a great sign for the guy that was part of the Patriot League all-rookie team as a freshman two years ago, forced to sit out last year with an ankle issue that he's healthy and good to go this year. Yeah, we didn't get to see him last year. The guy, really versatile, can play a lot of different positions, effective, and both of these teams, you know, littered with all-rookie guys year in and year out. First free throw falls for White. The foul on Gasparini. So the Eagles' big man, less than four minutes in, forced to sit with his second personal foul. And 6'8", sophomore Josh Alexander will come off the bench to spell Gasparini. Walter White, 6'6", sophomore, in New Haven, Connecticut, out of St. Luke's. Can do so many things. And right now, second on this team in scoring, top 15 of the Patriot League, close to 13 per game. Terriers by five. Harris puts it on the deck. Thought about the step back, now trying to make the pass to his former AAU teammate, Nelson, underneath. Munoz said, 6'3", sophomore, able to wheel it up off the glass and down for two. Nice athletic hustle move, take advantage of the opportunity there. And Mahoney back to the basket. And Max going strong putting it on the deck, and it's another trip to the free throw line upcoming for the Terriers. Eagles, though, trying to get untracked on the offensive end, but they trail early on at home. And welcome to the Patriot League here on a Sunday afternoon. And if you haven't seen the game of Max Mahoney, welcome to it. It's aggressive, in your face, and Mo just consistently giving you close to 20 and 10. That is a coach's dream. It sure is. I, I would have liked to coach him. 6'8", senior, shoots 61% from the field, just about 16 points a game, seven rebounds, does a little bit of everything. And he's developed his game. You see him getting to the foul line here, but he was away from the basket, able to shot fake, put the ball on the deck, get to the rim. Free throw shooting, as you mentioned, Jason, been a real Achilles heel for this BU team. And it's starting out in a bad way here. Just three of their first seven, otherwise this lead Make it three of their first eight. It should be more sizable. This feels like it's a 10-point game here early, and really the only lead here is by three for the Terriers. The Eagles are fortunate to be this close. I talked about it earlier. Two things to win on the road. Take care of the basketball and make free throws. And <laughs> Neither one of those things have happened for Joe Jones and crew. You see him there a little frustrated early. So nice to visit with him. So many wonderful coaches here in the Patriot League. They give us access. They talk to us. And, you know, Joe in his ninth year in Boston, just done a wonderful job. Foul on Mahoney, his first Souk Matone now onto the floor and trying to get there, but got there late foul. Score the basket for Alexander on the interior. And how about this pass from Saeed Nelson? Using the ball screen, Souk Matone a little late getting back there. You got to slide and help because Nelson will not keep the ball in his hand long, finds the open man. So Alexander able to score it. Can't hit the free throw either. American a little bit better than BU in the free throw category, 67% as a team. One point game here though. BU's had a lot of cracks from the free throw line. White working on Punyasin. McCoy guarded by Becton Jr. Wheels it back for Andrew Petcash. Junior from Pittsburgh, PA, into the game. Matone in his 6'10 frame, backing down. A couple of inches there on Alexander, but can't put it down. Nelson whips it across to the corner. Saeed driving. Solid defense from White there. They will call him for the ball. Looked like he was going to be able to steer him kind of into a bad decision, but the contact is called. You talked about American, how they play a version of the Princeton offense. And you see the drive here. Yeah, a little body there, Walter White. Uh, but American, when, when they're going up and down, and they can get the game going up and down, Nelson is so difficult to defend. Nelson kick out, looking for Harris. Back iron there. And Matone able to clear it. You saw there, Mo, you've got White at 6'6". 
Joe Jones told us earlier today, what can you do to slow down Nelson, who's beaten you up in the last few meetings? He said, try to put some different guys, give him some different looks, look size to make him maybe make a bad decision. Thinks his team has done a pretty good job the last couple of years in the half court, but it's been those transition chances off of turnovers. Well, he's done a lot of damage. Matone able to catch and score on the inside. And that's a great play by Matone there. Taking his time around the rim. Most big guys try to get that up quick. Gathering, shot fake, and finishing. That's a lot of improvement for him. Fletcher tied in sophomore from Torrance, California, into the game. Along with Ethan Britton Watts, freshman from Indianapolis. Tynan has it now. Here's McCoy. Back for Petcash. McCoy, spin dribble in the paint. Side rim. Matone going to get called for the push off, trying to get position to pick up the rebound. And that's his second foul. So the first five fouls of the game were all called against American, and now it's four consecutive fouls called against BU. As you see, Connor Nelson check into the game, sophomore from Denver, Colorado. Junior college transfer from the state of Wyoming as Harris exits. 9-6 here, BU. Six and a half minutes deep into this opening half. Nelson has a seam and zooms right through it to the cup. That's where he's so effective. Ability to get the ball up to the rim, crafty finisher. There's a little bit of everything. Fourth in the league in scoring, over 16 per contest. It's down a little bit. Averaged almost 20 points per game last year, but some more weapons, some more shooters on the outside for American. But AU's not been able to get on track from deep so far in this game. Rebound there for Alexander. One and done on that trip for the Terriers. Nelson rarely leaves the floor. Averaging about 35 minutes per game, leads the Patriot League in minutes played. Corner look. Nelson can't hit. But off the steal, Nelson doing what he does, and that's Thievery, good for three steals per game, leads the Patriot League top five in the nation. And that's what he was known for early on in his career. <laughs> Doesn't it feel like he's been playing here for about six or seven years? He's played so many minutes and just crafty, finds a way to score. And there you see again, another just quick crafty move, tapping the ball to a teammate. Yeah, heady little play, realized he couldn't snare it himself, but kicked it out to Connor Nelson, and AU comes the other way. Taking the lead, now a chance to extend it. Alexander against Matone. Nice little ball move. Scores it off the window. And Matone had the size advantage, but he got into his body there, created a contact. Connor Nelson with another rebound, and AU looking to continue this streak. Come on, get there, Stacy. Beckton, handoff. Connor Nelson. Looking for Saeed Nelson in the corner, and that's picked. Britton Watts will take it himself, and fouled by Beckton. More free throws coming up after the timeout, but AU has surged ahead, fueled in part by defense. And Saeed Nelson picking a pocket and picking up a pair. Here in the Patriot League, American has rallied 12-9 advantage against Boston University, trying to make it five straight in the series against the Terriers. AU Mo started over three from the floor, but since six of eight, and that offense starting to kind of hit on all cylinders, open things, some things up, despite not having a three so far in the contest. No threes, but Saeed Nelson creating a couple baskets, getting his teammates involved, and. As we talked about in the open, he's just the engine that makes them go. Overall, American is 6 of 11. Essentially, they're 6 of 7 in taking twos. They've missed all four three-point tries they've had. BU has not hit a three either. Missing both triple tries, 3 of 8 overall. And the Eagles, again, still 
with some early issues from the line. They get both in that trip, but five of 10 overall and trailing by one. And one advantage to BU, they will play a lot of guys. They've already gone nine deep and they have a deep bench, got some athletes and got some size. And flurry of subs for the Terriers. Pet cash battling for the board. He got ran over there by Connor Nelson. Who will pick up the foul. First on him. And team number seven against American. So now BU, again, we talked about the free throw struggles. Mo, they've already attempted 10 free throws. And we got 10 plus minutes in this half. They're going to shoot a lot more here. And that's going to be a depth problem for American if they continue to foul at this rate. And on the road, you'd like to get to the foul line. And Petcash converts six of eight from the stripe now in the season. Six forward junior. Guy that likes to set up beyond the three point arc and do some damage. 40%. Shooter from three-point land is Petcash. It's top 10 of the Patriot League this season. BU back on top by one. Underneath, trying to find Alexander, and it's Petcash who steps into the passing lane. And Gasparini going out the two, 330 mark early on here. American able to make a run without him. We'll see if he sits the rest of the half, that primary post presence for the Eagles. Nelson, kick out. The lefty Lebarski can't hit. Nice weak side offensive rebound from Connor Nelson. Pull up. Connor Nelson, no. Battle for the rebound, two Terriers misfiring, and finally, after that scramble, Alexander tried to steal it. Villarino has it, can't put it home at the other end. Nelson, one on two. Whirling move comes up short, and Mahoney with the outlet for what? Frenetic pace here to Walter White. Little hesitation and hit with the scoop. This pace uh, favors American because I think they like to get up and down a little more with Nelson, but BU takes advantage there. Nice finish by White. Connor Nelson. Little two-man game, and Labarski able to capitalize. About 50% from the field this year is 7-3 of the season. And American evens it up at 15. Another good looking young player for Mike Brennan. Freshman from Palm Beach, Florida. Rejection there from Alexander. Got Mahoney on the backside. White with another chance. Mahoney trying to keep it alive. Held basketball is the call and the arrow will favor the Eagles. Bumping and banging on the inside here. Nice ball movement. There's a good offensive possession because his feet were set. He was shot ready. Young fella got a nice finish and follow there. And I'll tell you what, give Josh Alexander a lot of credit for American off the bench. Uh, came in, the young fella, 6'8", sophomore from Iona Prep, up in my neck of the woods in New York. Nice effort and energy battling Mahoney inside. Marvin Bragg checking in now along with Yulret. Yuljet, better known as YY. 6'7 player from Nigeria. And now we've got a walk here on American and another turnover. That's the fourth on AU. <laughs> Bunya Sid gonna step back in here for Labarski. Wednesday, Great Atlantic 10 matchup. St. Bonaventure visiting George Mason, 7 o'clock Eastern on Stadium, the only 24-7 network available on both TV and digital devices without a cable subscription. So AU turns it over, BU gives it right back. Got a St. Bonaventure team that's turned the corner, winning seven of its last eight. Much like this BU team, Mo, is kind of turn the page a little bit. After losing five in a row, they've won four straight. 
Becton Jr. on the deck. And fouled by Mahoney, and that'll be the second on the Terriers' big man. Timeout here. Free throws coming up after the stoppage. It's a battle here between AU and BU in D.C. 15-15, BU and AU going toe-to-toe -to -toe here. In the Patriot League, Saeed Nelson's seen a lot of these games over the years, and we get to hear from the talented senior guard for the Eagles coming up. Chance to chat with Saeed earlier. You'll see that coming up the break. Also a little history here in the Boston and American rivalry. And we'll show you the pictures and specifics in the first half of this one if you're just catching up, coming up here at the break. Eight minutes left to go, opening half. Jason Apple Kacerik, glad to have you with us on a Sunday. Again, Boston University rallying to win in its league opener against Lafayette with a bucket in the final seconds. AU falling at defending league champ Colgate and desperately wanting to get on the board here against Joe Jones and win at home. Becton at the line. Mo, we mentioned this a little bit before the break. Kind of been a team going in one direction or the other for BU. Becton rolls in the first. They win at South Carolina. Mm -hmm. First ever win for the Terriers against an SEC team. A terrific win. Then they come back. They lose their next five. Again, they got dusted at West Virginia later that week where it got away from them early. And then they went to Mexico. And their trip there, they had three or four players come down with food poisoning. They go winless in that streak as Matone gets the left-handed layup, puts it in. And then they've come back and they've won four in a row. How do you ride out these waves as a coach? You go through the ups and downs all year. It's very difficult. You could see Coach Jones kind of the frustration on his face, happy where they are right now. But it's been an up and down battle. One word he used a lot talking to him was confidence, just trying to instill confidence in his guys and find a way to win. And another nice move inside, and American continues to look inside here. Yeah, Yotip getting the bucket. YY able to knock it down, good for about four per game. As AU retakes the lead. Jonas Harper there, guy on the old rookie team for the Terriers last season, can't get it to go. He's a guy they need to get going too, because he's has the ability. He has the ability to really shoot from the perimeter, string some shots together, score some points. They need to get him going a little bit. He's been very quiet. Harper averages over seven per game. He was devastating at stretches in league play last year from long range. And just one three in this contest so far for American from Lavarsi. One in the timer and. Why, why? Just ran out of numbers on the shot clock, and Mike Brennan watches his team with an empty trip down the floor. Jonas Harper trying to get set up. He had 13 points, three threes in the win against South Carolina. He had four threes, including that big go-ahead. Turned out to be game winner against Lafayette last time right. out. Yep. That's what I mean. They need that right now. They need a couple threes from him to really just kind of loosen up this game because you've seen the inside presence. You know, Mahoney, um, you know, his ability to score around the basket. and They need, they need that outside three-point shooting, and Harper's just been kind of quiet. Frustrating sequence for American. They get the block from Yulchep on one end, and then the ball through his hands off the pass from Harris at the other. Turnover number five against the Eagles. And make it six now against America. Harper, he'll hoist, can't hit. And Nelson able to get the ball. 47% shooting for American. Harris grazing the rim. He's been good for over two made threes per game, leading American, but unsuccessful that time. Harper left open again, can't get the roll. And a whistle inside will stay here. Now they're looking for him. They're trying to get him going, as I was kind of pleading for a little bit. So nice job going to the offensive glass there. Try to create an extra opportunity for yourself. And BU gets back to the foul line again. Yuljep picks up the personal. 
And it's Jack Hemphill at the free throw line. Sophomore from Raleigh, North Carolina. He'll stick to the first. He was out here early this afternoon getting some extra shots up and work with the coaching staff. It wasn't with the coaching staff. It was with the head coach coming out here to put him through some paces. Don't right. see that too often. Maybe I should have done that more in my uh, <laughs> career. Scored a few more baskets. And Joe Jones out here putting Hemphill through sure some work. Sure was. Trying to get him some extra work. And again, another guy to throw into the pot here for Boston off the bench. And this is the time of year that you can do that too. You know, you're not in school, you're not in classes yet. You know, you've got a little extra time before games, you're traveling, and good time for coaches to spend a little time with, you know, guys on their bench, guys they think they're gonna need, and an uncharacteristic air ball there for Saeed Nelson. American is third of the Patriot League, three-point shooting, 35%. They are one of nine from long range in this game. And BU, 0 of five, including Hemp Hill's misfire. Outside shots aren't falling. Will we get more attacks on the interior? Bragg has it poked away. Aggressive play by Harper. Trying to make the feed for McCoy, and Yulchep coming all the way back. Why, why? With nice hustle. Why, <laughs> why? We like saying why, why, but we like watching him because he just plays so hard. You see, watch Jonas Harper set him up right there. Got the steal, and he's trying to be unselfish here, but see, in that situation, the worst case scenario, you've got to get to the foul line. You've got to get up there, get it to the basket, try to create some offense in an afternoon here where offense has been hard to come by for both teams. Villarino wheels it back, Hemphill. Thought that one might fall, but off the heel of the rim. 18 apiece, four and change left opening half. Three on the way from Connor Nelson, and that's good. <laughs> Able to rattle it down, his 12th triple of the season. And why was that a good three? It was a drive. The defense collapses. Nelson always knows where the shooters are, and he was shot ready into his shot. Again, BU operating without their two primary posts here. Mahoney, Matone, both with two personals. So Hemphill getting the call. White looking to create and scores. Walter White may be one of the more difficult matchups in the entire Patriot League because of his size and kind of long arms and ability. He can almost play four positions. Joe Jones talking to, with us about continuing to stretch his game, have it evolve, add some more layers. And you saw some of it there with that great mid-range move, turnover AU. Numbers there for the Terriers, but just a little discombobulated, and Villarino walks. Timeout here, 327 left to go, opening half. Eagles by a point. 21-20, American on top of Boston University. Opening week of play here in the Patriot League. Eagles and Terriers both looking to make deep runs in the Patriot League postseason this year. Suk Matone trying to do his thing in his opportunity here in the opening half. Well, one thing I love to watch in this Patriot League is player development, and Suk Matone has gotten better and better and better. A lot of credit to the BU staff. Coming off the bench here this afternoon, but that catch and patience and shot fake and finish around the rim, offensive rebounding, creating an extra opportunity. Young man went to the Holderness School up in New Hampshire prep year and has just gotten better and better and better. Nice physical presence. You know, we talk so much about Mahoney, but between Matone and Mahoney, boy, they've got a big, strong front court. If they can get some three-point shooting and some constant, consistent guard play, they're going to be right in the mix in the Patriot League come March. Well, the issue is both of those guys with two fouls, they brought in Hemphill for a minute, but Joe Jones with 3.20 left opting to put Mahoney back in here for this last stretch with the two fouls and see how it plays out. Yeah, did I think you they have to. Did you, did you have that rule where if he got two, he was going to sit, or did you kind of play it situationally? I think you play it situationally, especially here. You know, this is a, a Sunday afternoon game on break and a game, you know, on the road. You got to win. You got a chance to go 2-0 and in the league. Like, there's nothing to wait and hold for. He's your senior. He's your best player. You put him in there and tell him, play without fouling, but play hard. Yeah, Mahoney. Two points from the free throw line, just 0 of 2, as he's not had a ton of opportunities to score offensively and of the shot clock. That one won't fall for the Eagles. The run out, White beat everybody down, but couldn't get it. Did retrieve it. 
The shot clock resetting to 20. New rule this year off the offensive rebounds. White watched by Labarski. Using the screen for Mahoney. Harper on the deck from the foul line. No. And Alexander comes to collect. A one and done for BU. Offensive rebounding non existent since the first couple possessions. And the Eagles have done a solid job defensively. BU just six of 23 from the floor, including missing all half dozen attempts from beyond the arc. And BU's been able to get a ton of trips to the free throw line. McCoy able to outfox Bunyasit for the rebound. Javante all the way, and he will shoot a pair. And Javante McCoy starting the starting lineup here today. Prepped at Exeter up in New Hampshire. Nice long athletic guard. Guy's played a lot of minutes in his first couple of years for BU. He had a team high 17 in that huge win for. Boston U at South Carolina. <laughs> Able to hit the first. Hemp Hill comes back in here for Mahoney. Joe Jones, we asked him about McCoy. He said, you know what? I'm not concerned about the three point shooting, which coming in, he was eight for 42 from long range. That's 19%. He said he's been a career 40% guy. I think the numbers are going to balance out a little bit better as we keep going through the season. And what you talked about is what he talked about. Right now, for him, confidence. And that last play was a perfect way to get your confidence back. Drive in transition, get to the foul line, knock down a couple free throws. Then you put a little extra work in, in the gym, and boom, those shots start to fall. So credit to him and the staff for keeping him going, because he's too talented to be shooting that percentage, and that will improve as the year goes on. Harper defending. Kind of got Nelson to hang up. But they will get Harper for the foul, his first. It's team number six on BU, so non-shooting foul and still under the limit. It'll be an underneath out of bounds here for America. Look for Nelson to come get the ball here, getting a ball screen situation. He's good out of these baseline out of bounds, 21 on the shot clock. Nice pass, Spoonia sit for Alexander. Can't finish in traffic. Hemphill snares the rebound. McCoy. Dump for Hemphill. Working on Alexander. Backs him down. Gets up. Can't get it in. Second chance, no. And Becton comes to take it away. A little hesitation from Nelson. Trying to get him going offensively, just two of six from the floor. Four points, co-leader with Bunyasit in this first half for the Eagles. Under 10 of the timer. Becton went back door hunting, but White was there defensively. And now contact here, they'll get Hemp Hill with a block. Boston foul on 32, Jack Hemp Hill, that's his first first seven. So you see Hemp Hill hedging out here, doing a nice job, trying to get his hands and feet out wide, but Nelson just so hard to contain. Mahoney going to come back in here. Joe Jones working a little offense, defense with Mahoney, again trying to protect against that third. I'm surprised he came foul. back with him here with a minute to go. I think they brought him back in for a little spark there, and I thought they were going to keep him on the bench. And Saeed Nelson, the one kind of Shaking his armor is free throw shooting. You know, 58% on the season, a guy who gets to the line so much, uh, he'd be way up the scoring chart if he was a little better free throw shooter. Uh, it's still pretty impressive. Over <laughs> 1,700 points, fifth all time at AU. Going to work his way towards the top 10 in Patriot League history. He's already 20th all time in steals, or excuse me, in assists, sixth in steals. 101st career start today. And it's fifth all time at AU. Those look pretty good. Yeah, Mike Brennan <laughs> would love to be able to keep him around for about yeah. four more years. Boy, it feels like he's been here for eight, how many minutes he's played. Every game we've done, he's just in the game all the time. Every other coach will 
be at his graduation yeah. in the spring to make sure that he's actually gone. Very true. Under a minute left to go here. One point lead of Eric McCoy. So Eagles switching there. YY getting back defensively trying to get to Mahoney. And we've got a foul. Leave that'll be on the big man for America, picking up his second. And Mahoney got lucky. He almost got called, almost got called for a, a hold off or a push off there, trying to create some space. And I think BU has got to regroup in the locker room, and, and he's got to get a touch almost every possession in the second half because he's just so powerful and so good around the basket. I'm not sure that American could keep him from scoring. Can BU still trials and tribulations from the free throw line? Mahoney one of two, BU 11 of 18 from the free throw line, dead even at 23. There's a timeout here for American with 37.7 left to go. And coming up at halftime, you'll hear more about the history here between BU and AU. Also chat with Saeed Nelson, his thoughts on his senior campaign. Back to the first half of this one as well. Boston University, seventh year in the Patriot League, won the regular season title in year number one and hosted the Patriot League final when they ran into Mike Brennan and the Eagles. And the Terrier attack that year was Awesome, and the Eagles just threw a net on it in the Patriot League tournament final. Shutting down Joe Jones's club held them to under 35 points. Disappointment as American went on to win the Patriot League crown and earn the automatic berth to the NCAA tournament. Out of the timeout. BU goes zone out of the timeout, changes it up. Nice move by Joe Jones. American worked on its zone offense today and were to attack here against this 2-3 of BU. Nelson will pull up with three on the timer. Can't get it. Strong rebound, Hemphill. Nice move by BU going to the 2-3 zone there. And now Joe Jones will burn his use it or lose it timeout. He'll try to strip something here with 8.6 left to go. BU changes defense out of the timeout. They haven't played zone the entire game, so American kind of thrown off, and then they settle for a long contested three. And it always works when the ball doesn't go in. Nice move there, Mike Brennan now. Chance to talk to his troops about defense, and BU here with 8.6. Plenty of time for a shot, maybe an offensive rebound, something going to the basket. Just 15 field goals combined here between these two. In the opening half, BU has got 12 points on the floor and 11 from the free throw line. That's how they've been able to hang close here. And at this point, even with American with 8.6 left in the opening 20. I think you got to get Mahoney a touch here. I think you got plenty of time, get the ball in, create a little offense, throw the ball into him, let your senior make a play. McCoy's led the Terriers with eight points, holding it down. Looking for the drive, gets it up and in. Double figures in the opening half for BU, and McCoy puts the Terriers in front at the break. So Javante McCoy trying to resurrect his offensive game. He's done that here in the opening half, but the Terriers have the lead by a bucket on the road against American in D.C. Six ties, eight lead changes first half. No team leading by more than five. 25-23 as we get start, or ready to start the second half here in D.C. American no field goals in the last 421 of the first half. BU made three of its first four shots and then went four of 22 from the floor. Just seven field goals in the first half for BU, four of them from Javante McCoy, leads all scores with 10 as he was four of six. Said Nelson hoping to get it rolling here. Two of seven shooting for him. He was the top scoring threat for the Eagles with six. Again, Max Mahoney, two fouls. Soup Baton, two fouls. Mark Gasparini only played a little over three minutes, picking up two fouls. 
See how all of those bigs impact the game. Here's Wonderway in half two. Right away, Mahoney with a touch against Gasparini. McCoy will give it up for White. He'll drive all the way to the cup and one. Nice offense by BU. Going inside to Mahoney right away. American chooses to double a little bit. The scramble out's a great time to attack. And there's that versatile Walter White ability to finish around the rim and BU back to the foul line where they have done a great job here all afternoon. So Mark Gasparini only plays 335 of the first half, sits with two fouls. He plays less than 20 seconds of the second half and he's got his third. Miss on the free throw attempt there for BU. And again, that's been a theme, just 11 of 19 from the line. Otherwise, this lead would be more sizable here for the Terry. It sure would, and, and 0 for 6 from the three-point land, but they've got the lead on the road. See if Gasparini can get himself established on the inside. Harris here got position, nice stop. And a little leaner for two. Again, the junior from New Brunswick, New Jersey, heard Said Nelson talk about their relationship. North Jersey, South Jersey together playing AAU basketball. And he's been a wonderful find offensively for the Eagles after sitting out last year as his transfer year from Minnesota, helping out this Eagle attack. Mahoney on the interior gets it to go. And Mahoney gets rewarded there. McCoy missed him on the pick and roll. He was wide open for a layup. And he was patient, waited, got the ball in the post, and went right at Gasparini. First bucket of the game for Mahoney. Did have some from the free throw line. And this fire for American and Harper will push the pace. McCoy trapped but finds Mahoney with the easy layup. McCoy's been the difference today. His ability to put pressure on the defense, find the open guy, and Mahoney off to a great start here in the second half. 31 25, largest lead of the game here for BU. Nelson off the screen. Pull up. And Gasparini will get the Eagles another look. Bunyasin picked up the dribble. Nelson in traffic. Yes, and on. Nelson just seems to always be in the right place at the right time. And that's a lot of part about being a great player. And Bunyasin there, no pull up. Finds Nelson, and you know we talked about it off the air. He's got bigger and stronger, and his ability to finish around the rim. You see here, just a quick extension, boom, foul to the line. Can't hit from the stripe. Mo, well, he was talking to at halftime about, and maybe not having that pressure that he's always got to drive, create for everyone else in this attack. The pressure's taken off a little bit, but he can still deliver when you need him to do it most. And an empty trip there for BU. One big thing in this game, we talked about it before, Nelson's really beaten up the Terriers when they've played head-to-head. -head. A lot of that's been in transition. Almost no transition chances here for American. There were only four BU turnovers in the first half. American got just one point. The last meeting last year, 18 turnovers for BU. American got 18 points off of them. Drive from Harris, no good. And McCoy will look to move. Villarino. Had to make sure he had control, pulls it back out. Mahoney working on Alexander, who's come in to spell Gasparini, and Villarino with the little float. Sophomore notching another bucket. There's a big three. Munya said third of the Patriot League, 43.5% from long range. Good for about two made threes per game. He's Able coming to knock it down. Yeah, he's come a long way from Grand Rapids, Michigan. So nice to see kids from all over the country coming to these great academic institutions in the Patriot League. And Americans got to get some stops now. That's what it's going to come down to. Their offense is starting to click a little bit, but they got to get stops on the other end. Yeah, McCoy looking. Enthused and impressive on the offensive end. Kunyasit 
picked up the dribble and gave it away. Villarino will lay it in. Thirty-seven thirty, seven-point cushion for the Terriers. Munyasi wanted another one, can't get it from deep. And one and done for American. No offensive rebounding presence. Pull up. That time, offline for Walter Watt. Nelson will twist in for two. Timeout here. Bucket for AU makes it a five point game, but Villarino able to score it in BU with a second half advantage. BU 37, AU 32, just underway second half here. Patriot League on a Sunday afternoon from DC. Said Nelson, Jameer Harris, they've known each other since they were kids in Jersey. Reunited here on the same team with American and played AAU ball together in New Jersey. And Harris sitting out last year as we touched on. And it's interesting too, now how do you make the connection? Well, we got Saeed here, but Jameer, his dad from the same neighborhood as coach Mike Brennan. In fact, Mike Brennan's dad played hoops the same high school as Jameer's grandfather. So families known each other a long time. Looks like it's a good fit here at AU and just another Consistent threat for the Eagles. White can't hit the three, and Nelson able to pick the ball. Mo, he's going to play somewhere professionally at some point. Nelson with what he's able to do, and boy, Harris, if he can continue to produce from long range, has the chance with his time left an American to develop into a pro prospect. He's got a nice looking shot, and I think Americans got to keep doing that. They got to keep shooting the three ball. Pet Cash can't hit from long range. And BU still scuffling from deep. Foul on Nelson, second of the game. As we look at our fan of the game, little guy getting a little action on a Sunday. Yeah. Trying to root for the home team. Good to get a matinee on a Sunday. Get him home and get some rest at some point. Matone. And Nelson coming in with another board. Nelson. Can we talk about everything he does, Mo, but that's an underrated part of his game. Just going to say, he, he's kind of everywhere right now, rebounding, passing with the ball. And I like his aggressiveness. And there it is, another great pass. And a three, the New Jersey connection that we've highlighted. And now BU on the ropes here a little bit. Because of the three ball, it's been the three ball that's gotten American back in this game. Yeah, down seven, eight straight points for American. Much of it via the three. And Harris able to knock down a couple. Five from long range in the game for the Eagles. And BU still without a three-pointer. 0 oh for 9. 0 oh for 9 from the three. And they're shooting 57% from the foul line. And yet they're only down, only down one on the road. It's strange for a JoJo team, Joe Jones team, to not be strong from three. It's been really part of the recipe for him since he's been at BU. This team just 31% of the season. Next to last of the 10 teams in the Patriot League. Great hedge there, defense by Josh Alexander. Big, long, active, aggressive defense now from American. Nelson whips to the corner for Becker. Working against Tynan off the bench for BU. Call away from the ball here, Mike Brennan. Has to be pleased. Kind of a quiet confidence from him seeing him at shoot around this morning. Get the sense too. A lot of times you see teams their record in non-conference right. misleading. Mike Brennan feels like he's got the makings of a good team. Again, if they can just find a little more consistency in key times at the defensive end, because the offense can come. You can see it coming here in Spurs. Beckton can't get it to go. Back for Nelson. And he'll get called for taking too many steps. Come on, come on, come on. 
double figures in turnovers now for Mike Brennan's team. Look, the UAB hosts Western Kentucky Thursday at 8. You can catch the game on stadium. The only 24-7 network available on both TV and digital devices without a cable subscription. Stadium, welcome to the game. See how that plays out there. The Hilltoppers and the Blazers down at Birmingham. Here in D.C., Eagles and Terriers separated by one. Reaching the 12-minute mark for the second half. Harper catch and shoot. Three is all net. First three of the game for the Terriers. Nice little set play there. And we talked about Harper in the first half. He's the guy that can really provide some offense. And there you see a nice inside out set shot. Finally, a three goes for BU. Harper, 37% from long range on the season. It's a much needed triple for the Terriers. Seven of the timer here. Harris wheels it back. Connor Nelson forced to put it up. Side rim. Alexander with a clutch offensive rebound. Nelson trapped. Tried to turn and score it himself. Still going aggressively. And Mahoney just looking to make a play, going to get caught with a personal foul. And that's number three. That's one of those ones you're just trying to do the right thing yeah. and still get burned. Yeah, tough play there. And just a little bit of positioning there. One of the knocks on him, he's just very foul prone. That's just the physical nature that he plays with. And again, Saeed Nelson just kind of in the right place at the right time. Connor Nelson drains the three. Sixth triple of the game here for AU, and their fourth since the break. And that great, great pass by Saeed Nelson right in the shooting pocket. And some big work there on the offensive glass. That last trip for American, extending the possession. Give him four old boards in the game. Mahoney. Gasparini. Solid defense. Out of bounds. It's off American. Second half of this Patriot League affair. Jonas Harper ringing up a triple. Saeed Nelson watching Connor Nelson do the same for the Eagles. One point game here. Eagles on top of the Terriers. Things shifting back and forth here in this second half of this Patriot League game. Our moment of the game. Yeah, how about these moments from these youngsters at halftime from Norwood Elementary School here in the greater DC area. Getting a little on court time. Ooh, nice low post move. Rebound, put yeah. back, finish. Seen a little bit of everything here in, in Mo. From this game, it hasn't been pretty at times. You're seeing more offensive flow here. The Eagles getting things going offensively. You come out of non-conference, you get into league play where everybody knows you so well. Challenges now for these coaches deeper into games to try to find ways to get your teams more successful, more consistency in the offensive end. Yeah, really, really good point, Jason. It's it's so critical because every game matters so much now and finding the right buttons to push maybe shortening your bench a little bit, changing the way you play a little bit, constantly trying to push different buttons. And you mentioned earlier Coach Brennan's kind of quiet confidence. And I think that's because, you know, he's got arguably the best player in the league. He's got the guy that, you know, when it comes down to it, it's going to have the ball in his hands. And Gasparini gets his pocket picked by Mahoney. Villarino's got speed to go and takes it all the way for two. Nice job by Mahoney there. Terrific throw ahead pass, unselfish. Boy, he's gotten better over his career, hasn't he? Certainly has. BU retaking the lead. Villarino with seven, three of five from the floor. Wait, wait, wait. Remember, BU only had eight buck, or excuse me, seven field goals in the entirety of the first half. And they've ramped it up here now. They have eight already here in the second half. Mahoney, great post defense there. You know, got lucky, got away with a, uh, what looked like a foul, although it wasn't. And they're going to take him out here and buy a couple minutes, bring in 
Big Souk again, try to buy Mahoney a few minutes here with those three personal fouls. How about BU doing some work with points off of turnovers? Nine of them in this game off the giveaways. Now 12 turnovers against America. Bit uncharacteristic for an AU team. It's only given it up about 13 times per game and already about near that mark now. Simitone picks up his third after Mahoney gets the breather. He's got three. Underneath out of bounds for AU. Four fouls of the team here in the half on the Terriers, two on the Eagles. Gasparini. Kuniasit from a sweet spot in the corner for another three. And that's all Saeed Nelson. What a pass. He waits patiently, draws the defense, hits a shooter right in the shooting pocket. Great, great teammate to play with. Harris, Bunyasit, Connor Nelson, all with a pair of triples now for the Eagles. Seven as a team. And the intercept. Connor Nelson took it away from McCoy along the baseline. Saeed Nelson twisting two and one. And a BU player is down, Walter White trying to defend there. Saw Nelson was the first to come over to take a peek at him as Walter's getting up slowly. Saeed Nelson's one of those guys, and this is a, kind of a funny saying, but he's actually faster with the basketball than he is just running. When he gets it, all of a sudden there's like an extra burst of speed, almost like he's got like booster jets on once that ball gets in his hands. And he went right in front of us there, and two steps, and he was at the basket. And zooming all the way in. We give him a dozen now. Look at that stat line, too, for a guy that if you had told him when he was a sophomore in high school, when he was five feet four <laughs> inches, that he was going to average close to five rebounds per game in college and have seven here, that, that didn't seem possible. But he always had the shooting ability, the speed, but now he's got a little more size, and that game, Mo, is continuing to get so well-rounded. It really is. The, the stat there that I'll circle and the difference in the second half is the six assists. He has just got his teammates involved and gotten them good shots. White on the inside, uh, getting back up after the tough tumble at the other end. Couldn't get it to go, but he will have a couple of free throws coming up. And Walter's still a little gimpy moving around. But again, when you miss an entire year like he did last year with an ankle issue, you're going to shake off anything you can <laughs> to be on the floor for the whole year. Yeah, he's a, he's a nice player and certainly gives them a lot of toughness and well-rounded. I, I think sometimes they are almost better playing with him at the four sometimes because he's so versatile. And, and we mentioned it a little bit, Joe Jones kind of telling us they want to stretch him offensively, score and transition, post-ups. Offensive rebounds said he's so talented and coach also says he wants to be great and as a coach you love when those guys take ownership of that. Oh you love those guys. And BU switches back to some two-three zone here, try to contain Saeed Nelson. Three on the way and the hit. Harris with his third triple of the game. I like the move there and the change in defense, but you gotta make guys put the ball on the deck and when they're standing still and comfortable, Harris, a really good shooter, great range, a little over 10 a game on the season. Largest lead of the game at five here for the Eagles. In the threes, which were non-existent for the majority of the first half, been flowing of late. Bunyasit, tough two take, rejected by Tynan. Now the sophomore with a nice swat. At the other end, McCoy wheels it back. Tynan gets the lay -in. And that's what BU's really been best. It's when McCoy's playmaking, his ability to get in the lane and make some plays and drop it off, and nice defense to offense there for BU, using their depth on the bench. Turnover. American gives it up again. And McCoy going strong. Foul on Saeed Nelson. Tynan with the big block there, leading to offense, throw the basketball ahead. This is where McCoy's been good. Drive, dish, nice finish there. BU fighting their way back in this on the road. 
Foul on Saeed Nelson. That's his third. And the rare breather here for Nelson as he'll step out for a bit. Again, the leader in minutes played, about 35 per game for AU. Turnover, Titans pass got away a little bit, and Mahoney going to get whistled for the foul. In that little skirmish, that's his fourth. BU down three in the second. American here with the advantage by three, looking for its first league win in its second try early in Patriot League play. BU won its league opener. That's Lafayette in the final seconds. Back on Thursday, American fell at Colgate, trying to turn the tables here at home and continue a run of mastery here against the Terriers, making five straight wins in the series. So Saeed Nelson, three fouls, sits here for a stretch. He leads the Eagles with 12 points. McCoy and White, each in double figures with 10 for BU. And boy, the trials and tribulations in this game from Max Mahoney, just five points, picked up his fourth foul with that cheapy there at the other end before the timeout. Jameer Harris is elevating his game. How about four triples for him? And Joe Jones furious on the BU sideline. When you go to zone, you have to know where Harris is and push him out and not let him get a three up. Put him up. Harper. McCoy with four on the timer. Harper open from the corner, overshot it. Had to hustle it here, missed the rim, and it's a shot clock violation against BU. <laughs> Turnover 10. That'll go on the books as against the Boston University squad. Didn't expect him to sit too long, did you? Said <laughs> Nelson returns. Well, they used the TV uh, media timeout there to get him a little extra few seconds and yeah he's going to be in the game the rest of the way here under seven to go au by six connor nelson the lob for gasparini caught it in a difficult spot and deflected off the backboard he got it and still awkwardly was able to lay it in well they got a little bit lucky that time but Really, the difference here in the second half has been the three ball, and it's been Harris. Uh, Saeed Nelson finding guys, but Harris's ability to make shots has changed this whole dynamic for America. Joe Jones wants to talk about it. Eight-point lead for the Eagles here with 6.36 left to go. 54-46. American largest lead of the game at eight here. In this second half stretch, Jameer Harris, big reason why the Eagles have gotten some separation. Well, he's done a nice job getting to the basket and getting going offensively. Four for seven from the three, really been the difference here in the second half. 14 points, his veteran play, ability to make big shots. You see great form there, in rhythm shots. That's been the difference here in the second half for American. Hasn't been forced, it's been in rhythm, catch and shoot, confidence growing, and. Gonna come down to some stops now for American to kind of build on this lead a little bit. Nine of 22 from long range as a team. It's 40% as McCoy gets it going to the bucket. And again, we mentioned American been a little bit deficient defensively compared to that pretty hard-nosed defense they've really had to rely on in the past when the offense wasn't as charged as, as it is this year. But again, they've done a good job. And BU. Just one of 11 from long range. AU misses, and White, I would like to have that back as he lost it off the feed from Pilarina. Turnovers, if BU's not able to come back and win this game, it's going to be something that's going to haunt them. Obviously, the three-point shooting, one for 11 right now, but turnovers, that's their 12th. Tough to recover from. Mo, they had five in the first 26 minutes. We were kind of complimenting them, how they were right. holding on to it. Seven of them in the last nine minutes, as you talked about, that's been part of the reason things have slanted in the Eagles' favor. Beckton, under 10 on the timer, kind of hesitated there and called for the double dribble. See that three point disparity. Again, the Terriers had it 
via the free throw line. Been a big difference in numbers in that in the opening half, and now Americans piping hot from three. Villarino count that in the foul. He is an aggressive driver of the basketball. Got a terrific athlete. Nice jump away from the defense there, not to get the charge. Jump stop, get away from the defense there, and nice finish. Been a good charge here for them, which they needed off the bench. And, and able to stick it, three-point trip there for the Terriers. And it's a three-point game. Able to get it to a one-possession game. Gasparini moves it back for Becton. Now picks it up at the elbow. Nelson weaving through traffic, using his body, follows himself for the score. Amazing how, how much bigger and more physical he is around the basket there. He can almost throw it up on the rim and go get it now. Nelson continues his scoring surge. McCoy looked like Saeed had the tie up. Out of bounds, it'll belong here to BU. When you sit, going to come in here for Beckton Jr. Nelson's got 14. Six of 14 shooting, eight rebounds, seven assists. McCoy, pull up. Got it. Huge positive sign here for BU for a guy that's a good three-point shooter historically, but not been good this season. And we talked about it in the first half. How do you get that confidence back? Do what he's done throughout the game. Drive, get to the foul line, make some baskets. Really nice job by him. Just the second three of the game for the Terriers. Harris on the tear inside. We have a couple of free throws coming up. Javante McCoy here, got great great size, 6'5", nice form and touch there, and done a nice job throughout the game getting to the basket. And We talked about his percentage from the three-point line has not been good this season, but big confidence builder. He's really been terrific for them throughout the entire game. 15 points to guide the way in this one, had a career-high 30. First-round playoff win of the Patriot League tournament last year against Loyola. And suddenly, BU oh, oh with a chance oh, to tie it up here with about four minutes deep, left. Deep, deep. They're doing that with Max Mahoney, who get averages up, almost 16, held to just five in this game. And saddled by foul issues. White with the take off the window and down. See some of the athleticism now and the depth of BU as they've settled down defensively, got better offensively. 12 now for Walter White, one point game. Nelson for the other Nelson. Connor off the feed from Saeed. Gasparini battling for it. If that's on Mahoney, he's done, and it looks like it will be. His fifth, and the leading scorer for the Terriers will be a spectator for the final 340 as this one works its way down to the wire in D.C. Bit of fun seesaw affair here. In this Patriot League showcase for American and Boston University, one point game, 340 left to go. Glad to have you with us, Jason at Mo Pacera. Watching the second game of league play for both the two players we touched on at the top of the telecast, Mo. They've had vastly different afternoons with Mahoney at the foul issues and Nelson really putting his fingerprints on this game. Mahoney, three you know, fouls kind of away from the basketball, never really able to get going today. Uh, and Saeed Nelson, you know, quiet in as far as Saeed Nelson goes, but, you know, some of the subtle things he's done, finding guys, getting guys shots, and, you know, kind of fighting his team back here in the second half. He's done a nice job. And the scoring's down from what he's had to do in his career, but again, he's starting to fill it up in other ways with the eight rebounds, the seven assists. Gasparini at the line, and able to get the first. And he's been quiet, too. He scored double figures in his last three games in four of the last five. But again, a couple of early fouls for him. Never quite been able to get into a rhythm, although he's got the nice roll at home. Give him six points now in the game along with three boards. 
Gasparini only played 12 minutes with the foul issues, but right now, American in position. Up three. McCoy, a little pick and roll maybe with Matone. Matone gets the offensive board back from McCoy. Harper got a step. Can't hit. Matone, second chance is there. Boy, two great offensive rebounds by Suk Matone. Excellent effort off the bench. Massive with Mahoney on the bench, fouled out, that Matone delivers in the offensive class. Connor Nelson setting up there, watches the corner three rim out. BU, chance to retake the lead. Where are you going here if you're the Terriers? I think you got to put the ball in McCoy's hand, let him create. You know, crash the offensive glass, try to use some of that size. McCoy's got it now. Watch by Nelson. Go run, go run. Go. Millerino wave it off, foul on the floor before the shot. They'll get Harris for the contact. In non-shooting foul, sixth of the half, second on Jameer Harris. So it's a non-shooting foul. Underneath out of bounds, restart for BU. Matone, handoff for McCoy. Harris getting back on him defensively. And they'll get Harris saying he hooked back in, according to official Brandon Cruz. So a couple of free throws ahead for McCoy. Yeah, McCoy's been super aggressive here. This is just a crafty play. Although Harris is straight up and down, creates the contact there, gets to the line. McCoy watches it rattle down. Fifteen of twenty-three at the stripe in this game. Fifteen of twenty-four for BU as we remain even at fifty-nine. And if they're not able to pull this one out, that's going to be a long bus ride. Looking at that box score from the foul line for BU, sixty-two and a half percent from the stripe. You know, I don't miss those long bus rides, Jason. Connor Nelson trying to make it a happy home event here for American. <laughs> Ten three of the game for AU and the third for the sophomore from Colorado. Oh, Timeout, yeah. Terriers. El Americans shooting here from long range in the separate the second half has been the difference. Number zero always knows where his teammates are. And boy, he may be one of the best guys I've ever seen at those cross court skip passes into the corner. He just finds guys in rhythm shot, Big shot here at home, and now it's about defense for Coach Brennan. 143 left to go. Coach Brennan working the grease pencil or grease marker here with authority there. <laughs> yeah, he is. Trying to set the defense appropriately. How about our next game on Facebook? Hope you can live up to this one. Air Force visits New Mexico Saturday at 6, exclusively on Facebook Stadium. Welcome to the game. The Pit, one of the best venues mm -hmm. in all of college basketball. Paul Weir as the Lobos charging hard at home, just like the Eagles are here against the Terriers. Out of the timeout, Harper for McCoy. Again, Terriers just two of 12 from long range. It's a contested two for McCoy, and it's no good. Plenty of time here now. You don't have to panic. A minute and a half. Got to play through this whole possession here. Play without fouling. Secure a rebound. Know where Nelson is. Guard the three-point line if you're BU. Harris for Nelson. Eight to shoot. Saeed trying to set things up. Late in shot clock situations, he'll kick out Harris. 3 0. Connor Harris with an offensive board and then smartly calls timeout while trapped on the baseline. Really, really good defensive possession for BU, but they just didn't finish it, giving up an offensive rebound. And you see, contested shot, although McCoy really didn't get his hands up there, got a little lucky. And then offensive rebound, got a contest. 
and rebound and nice hustle there by American and smart to call a timeout. Just under a minute now, 19 on the shot clock. 62-59, the arrow favors AU in this situation. Both teams in the bonus with free throws. Should we hear the whistles and trips to the foul line coming up? 19 here on the shot clock for American. And then again, ball in the hands of Saeed Nelson and let him make a decision. Let him make a decision. He's your senior, he's your leader, he's the preseason player of the year. Again, the one chink in his armor, as we've talked about, Jason, is his free throw shooting. He's not the best free throw shooter, but at this point in the game, you want the ball in his hands. How about this, Mo? Numbers for Saeed Nelson in this game. He's sniffing a triple-double. 14 points, 10 rebounds, 8 assists. The last triple-double for an AU player 40-plus years ago, <laughs> December of 79 for Russell Bowers against St. Mary's. Was that St. Mary's of Maryland, or uh, we think it's St. Mary's of California? Undetermined, right? Yeah. Saeed Nelson has it here. American trying to set something up. Timer under 10. Game clock under 50, and Nelson called for the Ooh. travel. A little bit of a breakdown there, and Nelson yeah, it was a, we were blocked steps. a little bit from it. We were blocked a little bit from it. He was trying to create a foul right here. Ooh. And the no call on the contact there with Matone yeah. and then whistled for the steps. So BU can tie it with a three. Only two of them in the game for the Terriers. Millerino over Harris, no. Harris able to collect it and foul. Well, they were able to drive, but the look kind of in traffic under pressure. 20 seconds left. And it'll be free throws here for Jameer Harris. Four of eight from long range and one of two so far from the free throw line. 15 points for him so far in all. That makes it a two possession affair. Harris making a couple threes in the second half really changed the dynamics of this game. And two free throws there may help seal it. Well, at halftime, Mo. Uh, Jameer Harris was 0 of 4 and 0 of 3 from three-point land. Since then, he's been pretty spectacular. All 17 of his points coming here in the second half. Great halftime speech. Yeah. <laughs> Coaches take credit for that? Yeah. yeah, I was trying to give Coach a little credit there. And, you know, um, unfortunately, uh, the way that you know, the game is today, you know, some three start going in and, and, and everything starts to roll along and they were a little better defensively. And, you know, we talked about Nelson and, and what he's done statistically here, but, you know, him finding guys and hitting guys in the shooting pocket, there's so much to be said for, you know, receiving a ball ready to shoot at the right time. And Nelson's as good as I've seen at that in a long time. So for American here, 20 seconds, you want to play without fouling, very important. Most importantly, you don't want to foul a three-point shooter. If you're BU, you don't have to get a three here. You've got to get something really quick going to the basket. McCoy on the move, and a foul coming late. Free throws here for McCoy, and Gasparini picks up his fourth. Yeah, Gasparini got lucky there, to be honest with you. In that situation, you've either really got a foul, commit a, you know, commit a foul, a hard, a hard a aggressive foul, um, that could have very easily been a three-point play. Um, or, or you've got to get out of his way and, and just take the ball out of bounds. And the free throw issues continuing for Joe Jones' team. 15 of 25. Yep, that's the story of the game. In a five-point game, that is enormous. Second one is good, but still, BU down two possessions with 13.2 left. And Nelson fouled immediately. 
He'll walk to the other end. Mo, this is one of those ones. If you're Joe Jones and it doesn't go your way, you're going to scratch your head. So we shot 27% in the first half and led by two. We shoot 54% in the second half, and we may end up walking out of here with a loss. That's why I'm glad I'm sitting here with you, buddy. I don't know. Those are the tough bus rides and talks with your team, and you got to get your team back up and ready to play. And they're going back home for a couple games, so that's fortunate. This is a game that America really needed to win. And Nelson misfiring on the first. Maybe both teams some extra free throw practice uh, during the last week of holiday break here. Difference in the game for American, three-point shooting. Two of 12, first half, eight of 14. Yep, there's 57% the yep. yep. in the second. That's, that's it, Jason. That open change the whole game. Down five, Villarino counted in the foul. You talked about it. If you're going to foul it, make it count, no bucket. See, that's the thing as a coach that drives you crazy. And, and you know, if you're Coach Brennan here, you know, Gasparini's a senior there, you've got to get out of the way. Or you got to take him out and not let him score a basket. That's just, you know, almost inexperienced and inexcusable for a senior. And Gasparini fouls out. So now, Villarino going to at least potentially give BU an opportunity. We'll see how it shakes out here. Chance to make it a two-point game, and does. 6.8 left. Eagles not out of the woods yet. Almost a steal, but they'll get McCoy for stepping out of bounds in contact with a basketball, and e, uh, AU dodges one hugely. And they've got to get the ball in, and then they've got to have to make a free throw here. There's a lot of time left here. Like you mentioned, really an unexcusable foul by Gasparini. I just can't, I can't believe it two times in a row. And again, timeout taken. Or the officials take it a timeout here. I think they're going to go as they can in the last two minutes, Mo, and look at the video replay to make sure they have the right call on who the ball was off of in that last out-of-bounds sequence. Tony Crisp, Brandon Cruz talking. Stephen Perry Jr., the other member of this group. Five point six seconds left as we take another look at the last inbound attempt. And they called McCoy's foot out. He may not have been out of bounds. That's that's what I think you know the BU guys were arguing is that they called him out when he caught it there, but he may not have been out of bounds. And we, we you know got one quick look at it there, but you know, if you're BU here, you don't want to get beat long for a layup. You want to keep everybody in front of you and try to, you know, obviously go for a steal, number one, because there's only 5.6 seconds here. So try to get a steal. That's your first order of business. 1A is not to get beat long. And then 2, that's 1-1-A one, one and 2, Jason. I just confused myself here, is to foul right away. The other question that I think they were looking for was to make sure they had the appropriate amount of time, time. on the clock. Time. And yep. they've added, as you can see, seven tenths of a second. Okay. So it goes from 5.6 to 6.3. And if you're American here, you've got to go meet the basketball with two hands and get ready for a foul. Be strong with the ball. We get a foul here even before the inbound. We're walking the See, other way. See, I don't like that. I don't. I don't like that. I think you got to. You got to try to go for a steal. You basically take yourself, you know, out of the game here with with a couple made free throws. I think you try to get a steal, especially all the way on the other end of the bas basketball court there. Well, didn't see it, but the guy you did not want to foul is this guy. Correct. On the season, he is 27 of 28. You know, again, another kind of mental breakdown. That's the one guy you don't want to get let catch the ball. Matter of fact, it, you know, as silly as it sounds, the guy that you probably would let catch it is Nelson uh, because of his inability to make free throws. 
timeout taken here. Six seconds left. 66-63. One more free throw to come for Jameer Harris. And BU going to hope upon hope it can have some magic. But again, as automatic as Harris has been this season, again, missing one now. And 29 free throws on the season. Percentage is not looking real good in BU's favor. You know, been a lot of mistakes here in the last minute or two for, for both teams. The positive in that is there's a lot of things you can coach and look at in film. You know, it's very early on in the season. I mean, those are the type of things for American. You're going to be in a lot of close games. You've got to learn to execute at the end. There's some teaching points. For BU, there's a lot of teaching points. You can really get on your guys to get in and get some extra free throws in because you and I have talked about it. Hey, they make free throws today. They, they walk out of here with a win. No, no, no question about it. So um, a, a lot of teaching and a lot of coaching can still go on here, you know, win or lose. So on both sides of the ball. Six ticks left. Another free throw coming from Harris. American trying to join the likes of Holy Cross, Bucknell, and Lehigh. All three of those teams victorious in Patriot League play on this Sunday. Now 29 of 30 on the year. Not the guy you wanted to foul. And a throw away here from BU, and that made official Lucy fall. So they put a little bit of time back on there. It was never touched, so the clock shouldn't have started when they threw it in. American will have it. And a foul will turn the other way. So, wow, a foul on American before it was inbounded. So this thing still isn't over. I'm shaking my head here. There is there, The last two minutes of this game, coaches are going to have about two weeks worth of film to watch to uh, go over stuff with guys. Again, yeah, McCoy hoisting it. And time will expire as AU hangs on here. Limping to the finish line, but getting to the finish no uh, line nonetheless. 67 63 the final here. Mike Brennan's team snaps its three game slide, wins its Patriot League home opener against BU in kind of a game of survival here. Biggest positive for American, besides the near triple double from their senior leader, Jameer Nelson. It's the three point shooting. And Mike Brennan will tell you maybe the last couple of years they had guys that understood their offense better, but they weren't hitting the shots. These guys, including some newcomers like Connor Nelson, Jameer Harris, their first year in the attack, they're shot hitters. Ability to make the three changed the dynamics of this game in the second half. So it was a home game that American really needed to win as they go on the road now. But for the Eagles, as we know, everything still runs through. Number zero, and he delivered the play of the game here for us on this day. Saeed Nelson Mo just can create with the best of them. Yeah, stuff your stat sheet. He can do a little bit of everything. We talked about his ability to get to the basket, his size, his strength now as a senior, and just a terrific all around performance to help his team get a much, much needed home win. And that same player is our player of the game, Saeed Nelson. You mentioned it, Mo. So many categories he can change the complexion of an affair. 15 points, 10 rebounds, and 8 assists, a near triple-double for the senior. I thought he was spectacular in the second half. His ability to really, you know, get guys shots and find open players. He throws the ball cross-court. I mean, that's just a, you know, on a dime pass that wasn't made, but then a hustle play, and that was in the first half of finish, and then, you know, He's long and lanky and just can stuff a stat sheet, plays under control all the time. So nice job by our player of the game and, you know, arguably our player of the year in the Patriot League, yeah. Saeed Nelson. Yeah, and preseason player of the year for the second consecutive season. And if you're Joe Jones and BU, what do you take out of this game? You know, Max Mahoney, your best 
player really never is an influence in the game with foul troubles and an inability to really get him a lot of touches on the interior. And still, you're almost able to steal this game on the road. Once you get rid of the frustration, you say, hey, you know, our best player didn't have a great game. He, he played without, you know, a, a lot of minutes because of foul trouble. And they didn't shoot free throws well. If they do those two things, they probably sneak out of here with a win. So they're not that far away. It's what you think about here early in league play. Maybe we're not as good as we think and not as bad as we think either. <laughs> Things right. will level out for both of these teams as they roll through. On this day, American continuing a nice run against Joe Jones and the Terriers, make it five straight in the series for the Eagles against the Terriers. That'll do it for us, for Mo Casera and our crew. This is Jason App saying so long from our nation's capital for scores, highlights, features, and more. Log on to watchstadium.com.